Good afternoon. Welcome to TNCRadio.live. This is the Truckers Network Radio Show. And now here's your host, Shelly Johnson. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. Yes, this is the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNCRadio.live, where we offer the entertainment, sports, weather, traffic, news, and information that our commercial drivers want to hear. Many of our listeners may be familiar with Robert Palm and his nonprofit, Trucker's Final Mile. It's a nonprofit that works to reunite deceased drivers with their families should something unfortunate happen on the road. They also cover the cost of various needs of a driver's family and help drivers and their families in the event of a family emergency. They provide resources for missing drivers and the funding help drivers who are disabled need after an accident. And all of this takes money. In an effort to help with the overwhelming need, Sean Kitchen is driving his motorcycle coast to coast in five days to raise funds for Trucker's Final Mile. The fundraiser is named the Transflow 5005, or 5K in five days. With us is Robert Palm to discuss this great fundraiser and how everyone can help meet the goal. Welcome, Robert. Thank you for being on our show again today. Well, thank you, and thank you for having us uh, on your show. We appreciate the effort. So tell us, what's going on with Sean? How's he doing? Uh, when did he start this, and what's happening? I'll tell you, that's, that's a man right there. Uh, Sean began his journey from Jacksonville, Florida, at 3 a.m. Eastern Time this past Monday, the 15th. I met with Sean uh, out in San Diego at his turnaround point, Dog Beach. And he is turned back and he's going back to Jacksonville. And at just prior to going on this interview, he was on Interstate 10 at mile marker 874 in Texas. Uh, he's just now getting into the Beaumont area. And he's anticipating being back in Jacksonville in time for the 5 o'clock news Friday the 19th. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I would say he's a brave man, too, considering the weather isn't always so wonderful in November. <laughs> well, you know, he, he picked the right time to do it because there hadn't been any serious storms, and I hadn't even thought about the fact that he was on a motorcycle. Yeah. And when I met him in San Diego, he said, man, it got cold out there in New Mexico at night. So uh, I hadn't even thought about what temperatures he was enduring. But... um. He's on his way back to Jacksonville. He should be over there Friday. I've had a motorcycle before, and I know things can get pretty darn chilly real fast, because especially when you're going, you know, 55 miles an hour or whatever, you know. Right, right. And, you know, the, the great folks over there at Transflow and Geotab, uh, they are sponsoring his journey in, in, uh, in his fundraiser for our uh, charity organization, and we can't say thank you enough to Transflow and Geotab for, for helping him get out there and taking care of his needs while he's out on the road for this. Oh, oh, that's wonderful. Now, was this Sean's idea? How did all of this start? Well, I don't know how it all started. Sean, Sean is an uh, endurance rider. He's okay. done this several times in the past for other organizations. And um, he was sitting around chatting one day and... and uh, they pulled the rabbit out of the hat and they said, let's do it for truckers find a mile because, you know, Sean is a former over the road truck driver. He, he's got 16 okay. years uh, behind him as a driver. So uh, truckers find a mile was close to his heart and they chose our organization to support on this particular fundraising mission. That's excellent. Do you know how much he's raised so far? Uh, I know it's short of his goal. His goal is $5,000. Right. And I believe we are just on. It's been it's been a slow, slow week to get the word out. And that's why we appreciate you having us on here so much. We are just under one thousand dollars. So we're we've got a long way to go. Oh, yeah. And hopefully we get some response from this program and others out there. Absolutely. Um, and I know the American Truck Syndicate and several other Facebook groups are, are at the present time streaming this interview. So okay. hopefully we reach a few people. We can get everybody to donate five dollars www.truckersfinalmile.org and put five K and five in the comment section, and that five dollars will get us up to that five thousand dollar mark. We could do this. I'm I'm confident we could do this. 
Would you mind repeating that, Robert, if for our drivers who are driving? They may not have caught that. Well, uh, a $5 donation would, would help us get to the $5,000 point. Mm-hmm. Our website is www.truckersfinalmile.org. Mm-hmm. And if you put 5K in 5 in the comment section, all those donations will be attributed to Sean's efforts. Okay, terrific. For those who aren't familiar, could you tell us a little bit about Trucker's Final Mile, how you started it, how did it all evolve? The Trucker's Final Mile is a 501c3 charity organization um, with a distinct mission to reunite North American truck drivers and their family in times of crisis. We have grown into a vital resource for the families of the individual truck driver behind the wheel out there on the road when a tragedy strikes. Um, and each, our, our mission is supported by six distinct programs and each one of those programs would generated from, you know, experience in the industry. I've been an over the road driver and in the trucking industry since uh, March of 1981. And I've experienced a lot of things out on the road seen a lot of things, had a lot of things happen in my particular life. And each one of our missions, our, 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 our programs are structured off of those experiences. Well, what you do is absolutely wonderful. And I know, I, had, I believe I talked to you earlier this year, you said that the demand really has in, increased. Yes, it has. What, um, kind, of, what kind of demands, what, what kind of requests are you getting? Well, right now, you know, it, uh, charities are having a difficult time every, everywhere, and, and Truck sure. Responding Mile is no exception to that. Um, we're primarily pushing our signature program, which is program number one in the assistance to the family to bring a deceased truck driver home to be laid to rest. Now, Truck Responding Mile does not go pick up any driver. What we do is we eliminate or reduce the burdensome cost of the preparation and transportation of a deceased individual from the location of loss of life to their hometown funeral home. Mm -hmm. Um, In 2021, thus far, we have assisted in bringing home 64 truck drivers. Wow. Yes, ma'am. Is that a lot more than you've seen? This is... 2021 is the most we have ever done in our eight-year history. Wow. And for those who may not know, uh, in, quite often companies don't provide that kind of assistance, do they, if it's a company driver? and Well, ma'am, being in the uh, most regulated, deregulated industry, mm-hmm. there are no requirements, no uh regulations, no laws, no statutes, and of course, no mandate for any company to bring any driver home for any reason. However, with that said, there are some very, very, very great companies out there that go above and beyond for their families when a loss of life occurs, and and they don't even ever need to call us. But on the other side of the coin, there are companies out there where they will tell their family to call us because they don't, won't, or can't get their driver home. It's a fact of the industry. It happens. Uh, and it's expensive. You know, if somebody's 5,000 miles away or something, uh, oh, my God. Yes, uh, yes ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And, and, you know, what Truckers Farm Mile wants to do in, in our signature program is that, you know, the cost – to do that is highly restrictive sometimes. Um, it can be in the thousands of dollars to transport a deceased individual across the country. Yep. Uh, you know, we recently had one that was $3,940. And what we like to cover is all of the preparation costs, all of the permit costs, mm-hmm. um, the cost of the death certificates to be issued, the uh, transportation from ground you know, from a medical examiner to a funeral home for preparation, right. and then from a funeral home to an airport, 
uh, when we use an airlines to transport the decedent and then the ground transportation for the local funeral home to go out to the airport to pick the decedent up to be uh, prepared for the funeral. There are so many costs that people don't even think about, and then these things happen, and families aren't prepared for that. I definitely want to cover more about what your organization's doing, and of course this fundraiser, 5K in five days. We're talking with Robert Palm from Trucker's Final Mile here on TNC Radio Live. This is the Trucker's Network Radio Show. I'm Shelley Johnson here with Tom Kelly. Stay tuned for more coming up. This blog on TNC Radio Live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Quick and healthy meals for truckers. Life on the road can make it challenging for truckers to find a healthy meal. Truckers are on the go and sometimes on a strict time frame to get their loads delivered on time. Stopping at a truck stop for fast food sounds like the most convenient option. Although it may be more convenient, eating unhealthy gas station food can take a toll on one's health. Plus, it can be more expensive. Stopping at a grocery store and picking up healthy foods can benefit truckers in many ways. Eating healthy improves mood, health, and well-being. Consider investing in appliances like a cooler, slow cooker, lunchbox, or a microwave. This will make eating healthy on the road much easier. Breakfast. The most important meal of the day, especially for truckers, eating a good breakfast helps keep your energy up. Oatmeal is a quick and easy healthy breakfast. You can make it in under three minutes, and it's easy to store in your cabin. Tip. Adding some fresh fruits and nuts in your oatmeal can make it even more delicious. Yogurt makes a great breakfast. It's high in protein and can keep you full for a long time. Try adding some fruits, nuts, and honey. Toast and peanut butter. You'll need a toaster or a toaster oven for this one. Peanut butter contains high levels of protein, fiber, and healthy fats. It also gives you endless energy. Protein bars are the quickest breakfast option. It's safe to eat while driving. If you're in a hurry, protein bars will make a great breakfast. Lunch. It can be very tempting to pull over and stop at your favorite restaurant. Lunchtime is a great opportunity to make healthier choices. Some favorite healthy lunch meals are the bento box lunch with loads of healthy, clean foods. It's quick and easy, too. Burrito bowls are full of fresh veggies and just take 10 minutes to make. Ham sandwich, a classic, easy lunch. Chicken salad takes about 30 minutes to prepare, but it's well worth it. Serve it on lettuce or any type of bread you like. Dinner. This is where a slow cooker will definitely come in handy. Honey garlic chicken and veggies is the easiest one pot recipe ever. Hardly takes any effort at all. Beef stew makes a great dinner. You can enjoy it all year round. Whole roasted chicken in your slow cooker is a recipe every trucker should try. It's delicious and can keep you fed for a couple of days. Ground beef and potatoes are amazing and will only take you about 15 minutes to prepare. This blog was brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. TNC Radio. Live, your commercial driver navigation station. This is the Truckers Network Radio Show here on TNC Radio. Live. I'm Shelley Johnson with Tom Kelly, and we're talking with Robert Palm, who's the founder of Truckers Final Mile, about a new fundraiser that's ongoing right now to help the growing needs of his organization and the requests his organization's been getting. It's called 5K in Five Days, and they're trying to meet their goal. For those who just t- tuned in, um, Robert, could you uh, let everybody know what you need? And, I mean, the deadline's really, really approaching fast. Well, yeah, Sean is uh, Sean's kicking it. He's, he's doing a great, great job for uh, the fundraiser. Um, again, that fundraiser is sponsored by Transflow and Geotab. And it's to – Sean's goal is to raise $5,000 for Truckers Fund a Mile and, and our, our uh, programs to assist – North American truck drivers and their family in times of crisis. We are just under a thousand dollars. Um, and the goal is 5,000. So we need to raise up, you know, if everybody out there listening could just do $5, I'm confident we could have it done by the end of the day. The website is www.truckersfinalmile.org and just click on the donate button in the upper right corner. Enter your information, and then a notepad or a you know a message space will come up, 
and put 5K in five. And all of those donations will be attributed to Sean's fundraiser. We can let him know that being out there on that motorcycle from Jacksonville, Florida, over to Dog Beach, San Diego, where I met him Tuesday evening, um, he's doing a hell of a job, if I could say it like that. But I guess I already said it like that. Yeah, He's doing a hell of a job for us and raising some funds up. And, you know, with 64 drivers reunited with their families this year, the, the phone can ring anytime. Uh, our reserve is minimal at, at best this year. Uh, it's been a struggle since the lockdown and the pandemic, uh, but we're still getting the job done. And, and it's our donors that and, and supporters that, that do it for us. And uh, we can't say thank you enough to them and, and to you guys for having us on today. Well, what you're doing is such a wonderful thing, and I don't think people really think about it. Um, you know, nobody wants to think that something's going to happen to their driver, um, a family member. Um, all of a sudden, they get that terrible phone call. Uh, there's been an accident or the, the driver died while on the road. They don't plan for those kind of expenses, and I don't think a lot of people realize what all is involved. Like you were saying before we went to break, uh, there's so many things, permits and a huge convoluted process. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. It, it, it's, a, it's a detailed process. If you, you know, if one was to pass away in their hometown, you know, the family goes down to the local funeral home, speaks with the funeral director. The ar arrangements are made. There might be 10 miles of travel involved, and, and it's done. It's, it's pretty much done. It, it, it's a, if an individual passes away in their hometown, it's, it's a basic process. But should an individual pass away out on the road, you know, there's a minimum of two funeral homes required to be involved. Uh, sometimes three, you may have a very rural environment where they use an on-call system for fatality collisions or what have you. And then you've got the third funeral home that has possession. They have to get that individual to the medical examiner. And the second funeral home involved has to pick the individual up and do the preparation work, get them back to the third funeral home that's involved. And that's the one in the local hometown. Yeah, and they have to follow all kinds of regulations, and I would imagine it, it varies from state to state, doesn't it? It varies from county to county. Oh. Uh, there, there are certain protocols that have been put in place throughout the country since the pandemic uh, began and the lockdown began. We have had an instance where we had a uh, COVID-positive individual that passed away in his truck and we had to pay for a sealed casket um, because, you know, when you go on an aircraft, whether you're human remains or not, you are a shipment. And because of the particular protocols in this one county, uh, the shipment was classified as hazardous materials. So there's wow. um, a lot that has to go on. You know, and that extra sealed casket added $1,400 to to the cost of bringing that deceased driver home. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's just mind-boggling what these kind of costs are. And families simply can't sustain that sort of thing. And well, you know, Shelly, sometimes the the family doesn't have access to a final paycheck. Um, right. You know, it could be that in, in I, and I've seen it happen, so I'll testify to it, that the... Um, you know, final settlement went to a truck payment as opposed to going to the family. Uh, the, there, there may be estrangements within the family um, for access to, to you know, liquid funds. And, and sometimes, you know, you cannot get a hold of a decision maker at a major corporation on a weekend or after hours or, you know, someone that's going to make a decision for the family. So Trucker's Final Mile intervenes and, and fills that gap and we could get the driver home expeditiously. And then later on after that, you know, things could be ironed out or worked out, whether it's with the insurance company, uh, you know, payment plan for the funeral or, or whatever issues, you know, come up after that. 
So, now, do you assist in that sort of thing? Um, because I would imagine, oh gosh, when you're, when you're grieving, you're not going to think straight anyway. And to have somebody like you that can step in, that's huge moral support. And you can maybe help people work their way through the process because <laughs> logistically it's, it's well, daunting. Um, I'd like to direct you. Let me turn my phone off here. I apologize for that. That's the way. <clears throat> It, I, if if I could have you write down a website, www.greatnonprofits.org forward slash org forward slash truckers final mile dash org. That is a a, a charity rating uh, website. Where Truckers Final Mile has been rated a top nonprofit for six consecutive years. There are 60 plus reviews from the individual families that we have assisted, and we invite you to read one of them, any of them at your selection, or all of them. And that will tell you what the families that we have assisted. Uh, the in-depth service that we provide for these families. We assist in all of the logistics. We speak to all the funeral homes. We speak to every company involved to ensure that a driver's personal property is being facilitated to the family. Um, Everything that we can do to relieve any stress, anxiety, or, or difficulty within this process, uh, we step up and get that job done for these families. It's huge. And you also help when a driver's disabled on the road and various other things. Um, Did you want to kind of talk a little bit about that too? Because it isn't just a deceased driver that you provide assistance. No, and let me go into those real quick. You know, we do have six programs. Our signature program number one is getting a deceased driver home. Number two is for a severely injured driver uh, that is hospital admitted, um, not in the waiting room, but hospital admission. Um, We help get the spouse, significant other to the driver's side so that they can have a in-depth conversation. The spouse or significant other can speak with the physician team, the rehabilitation team, and, and the spouse, significant other gets relaxed a little bit. The driver gets relaxed a little bit, which actually helps the recovery process. Absolutely. And then get the spouse, significant other back home. She might have to get the Red Cross um, or another in-industry charity organization involved in helping. She may have to get the mother-in-law moved in to, to get with the children. She may have to consider downsizing the home because of the lack of uh, future income. So she can go home and deal with that. And then once the driver is released from medical care, uh, we can assist with the transportation home. Now that's program two. Program three is identical benefit, except that we categorize that under um, sudden medical episodes like a heart attack, stroke, you know, trucker has to go in for quadruple bypass, what have you. Uh, We do the same thing, get family to his side, get a plan going, get them home, get them implemented. And then um, we also have a program, should something happen to a household member, program four, uh, or the home itself, like a tornado or a loss of life with a uh, household member, get the driver home because he doesn't need to be behind the wheel of that 80,000 pound truck trying to work things out as, as his family has no shelter. Get him home, deal with the problem, get him back to the truck. Um, The other program we have, number five, is called Mobility. Should a driver lose his or her career due to an on-the-job related permanent disability, disabling injury, uh, we could go to a driver's home. We could help construct wheelchair ramps, uh, rolling showers, pocket doors in restrooms, lower countertops, things of that nature to uh, continue or improve the quality of life for that driver. And our sixth program is an on-staff chaplain so that we can evaluate the need for grief counseling 
you know, there's drivers out there that survive uh, suicide by truck. There are drivers out there that survive multiple fatality collisions. Mm -hmm. Um, There are children out there that are, our kids are connected to everything. They've got social media everywhere. Everyone's got a phone, you know, and they may see uh, a collision involving their parents sensationalized on a media uh, program. And that could be the last final image they have of their father or their mother. So our chaplain can help evaluate the need. We can then locate a hometown professional uh, counselor to get these individuals in front of a professional. And maybe we could take care of one or two or three of those sessions. Um, But in the case of an 11 year old girl, for example, uh, she may need, you know, counseling for several years and we just can't do that. But getting that, getting her in front of somebody may help in some way. Absolutely. What what your organization is doing is just phenomenal. And there's so many things that go into all of these things that can happen. And to help the families the way you're doing this, as well as the drivers, um, it's it's just invaluable. And, and I want to thank you for doing this for drivers. We're talking to Robert Palm, the founder of Trucker's Final Mile. And there's a fundraiser you need to help out. It's 5K in five days. The deadline is fast approaching. It's tomorrow. So please check out their website at truckersfinalmile.org and type in 5K in five days. We're going to be coming back with Robert to talk more about his wonderful organization and what it does. You're listening to the Trucker's Network radio show on TNC Radio. Live. Stay tuned for more coming up. Becoming a truck driver is not an easy task. You have to meet several requirements. After reviewing and meeting the requirements, you'll need to obtain a CDL or a commercial driver's license through the DMV in your state. To get your CDL, you must pass a knowledge and skills test. Many drivers attend a trucking school to help prepare them for the tests. After successfully passing the CDL test, you now have your Class A CDL. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? Well, there's a little bit more to becoming a professional truck driver than just passing a few exams and getting your CDL. Trucking, as you may know, is not an easy career. It can be stressful, dangerous, lonely, and emotionally draining. Drivers need to make it a priority to become fully prepared for life on the road. Being prepared for life on the road can help avoid unnecessary mistakes and losses. Attending a trucking school is one way for drivers to prepare themselves for their new adventure. However, drivers don't always learn everything they need to be successful during their time at trucking school. Trucking schools will cover the basics for classroom instruction and in-driving modules, but new drivers need to learn more than just the basics. How do new drivers acquire the right training? The Truckers Network is proudly partnering with Advanced Pre-Employment Training, which is a training course for both professional drivers and trucking companies. Advanced Pre-Employment Training helps grow your industry knowledge by providing training courses on all the important topics for becoming a successful driver. These include pre-trip inspection, company representation, communication, document organization, bill of lading, refrigeration units, weight and axles, safety, and industry knowledge. Their focus points are to increase stability and growth in the business, eliminate mistakes and financial losses, maintain company safety ratings, and eliminate drivers and owner-operators quitting or losing their jobs. The Truckers Network members can now save 5% off advanced pre-employment training courses by using our exclusive promo code. Become a member today of the Truckers Network and save instantly on the industry's best products and services. Visit the Truckers Network website at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. That's app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Hey, y'all, this is Curtis Grimes, and I want to give a shout out and a special thank you to everyone associated with TNC Radio.live. This is the Truckers Network radio show on TNC Radio. Live. I'm Shelley Johnson with Tom Kelly, and we're talking with Robert Palm, the founder of Truckers Final Mile, about a new fundraiser to help with the growing needs and requests his organization's been having. 2021 has been a record year. The fundraiser's called 5K in Five Days. Their deadline's tomorrow, and they need to meet their goal. So if you can donate even $5, please go to truckersfinalmile.org. 
go to the Donate Now button, enter your information. You'll see a notepad where you can type 5K in five days for this fundraiser, and your donation will go to that. It's uh, really um, a huge, huge need that uh, Trucker's Final Mile has right now. And if you've been listening earlier, you can see all of the wonderful things this organization does for truckers as well as their families. Robert, while we were off the air, you said something about sleigh bells. What sleigh bells? Sleigh bells. All right. I, I, in, in the last segment, I, I briefly covered these six uh, operating programs that we have right now in our strategic plan. Right. Sleigh bells and Santa is a seasonal campaign for the children that have lost a CDL driver parent out on the road away from home this last year. What we do um, is that we collect up gifts for these children. You know, the children, they're the ones that we see in the mirror as we pull out the driveway. They're the ones that have gotten the, the drapes pulled back, you know, looking out the window waiting for us to come back up the driveway. And when we don't come home, you know, the children are the ones that are, are they're, 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 they're the ones that, you know, there's so much going on in, in the event of a loss of life. Um, and so many changes the the household suddenly becomes a single parent household. Priorities have to shift drastically. Um, so for the kids that have lost a parent each year, we collect new gifts. Um, if you go to our website, www.truckersfindamile.org, uh, there's a fundraising tab. The second one, after you expand that tab, is Sleigh Bells and Santa. You will see the flyer right there. The flyer is also in uh, this month's edition of Large Car Magazine in the center. And our address is there where you can send a new unwrapped gift. And we're also looking for donations for sleigh bells as well in order to help cover the postage. And we have a, a, a great company, Fleet Advantage, that came on board. We have a very special gift uh, in addition to the regular gifts that we give. And Fleet Advantage is helping us with that. However, we need more companies to come on and sponsor. Uh, currently, to, as of today, we have 34 children enrolled in this program for this Christmas. Uh, we assisted 37 children with 130 gifts last year. And so we need some funds for that as well. It's, it's uh, www.truckersfindamile.org. Fill out the donation portion and then uh, in the comment section, if you desire, put in for sleigh bells. And uh, we appreciate any effort on that. That's a wonderful program. How long has that been going on with your organization? This is our sixth year with sleigh bells. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It makes such a huge difference, and when families. Uh, uh, we're we're going to make a huge difference. We're we're not disclosing what this one particular. You know, we don't want these kids to know yet. Um, you know, we got a special deal with Santa Claus, and um, after uh, the the campaign is over after Christmas, we'll announce to everybody what we did for these children this year. Um, mm -hmm. Fleet Advantage is on board with it. It's an awesome deal. Uh, they're going to get regular Christmas gifts and then something very, very special from the trucking community. And um, I think everybody would, would be happy to be involved in, in what we're doing for these children in this industry. That's awesome. And that, that's got to really, I, I imagine you get some thank yous and, and, and you got it, it gets a little emotional. You know, when you've got kids involved right around the, the holidays and everything, and they've lost one of their parents. Um, yes, yes ma'am. It's a dramatic change. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I know my nieces, you know, we lost uh, my brother in 93 to a truck crash. Oh, and, and my nieces, it, it, it hit them hard. Oh, yeah. You know, and they were young children at the time. Sure. Back in 93. Sure. Yeah. And, and they don't understand, and they, they process things differently, and... It's something that lives with them for their lifetime, really, when you Correct. think about it. Yeah. Yes, it does, for a lifetime. So what is your deadline on sleigh bells? Uh, December 17th, and it is open to any child that lost a parent this year. Uh, we ask that we receive a detailed 
because we have to verify everything, uh, a detailed email with the next of kin's address and contact information um, to sleighbells at truckersfinalmile.org. We will enroll that child, um, and we need to have that email by December 17th or any sponsorships of that particular uh, campaign by December 17th or any new gifts uh, mailed to our Albuquerque address by December 17th. Well, we definitely want to have you back after the holidays so you can tell us how everything turned out with that, too. Because uh, Looking that's forward to that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if we did we go into the details on what inspired you to start this organization. I, I think people would like to hear that, too. Well, it's a long story. You got a minute? Oh, absolutely. Well, we got about four and a half minutes right now <laughs> in this segment. Well, I got out of the Army in 1980. January of 80, and I went and sowed my oats for a while as a young kid at the time, not knowing what to do, where to go. And um, in 81, I, I started driving a truck locally, dump truck, got into the towing and recovery uh, end of things. And I guess officially it was March of 91. I, I'm sorry, 81. And, I, you know, I, I lost my dad. I was sitting on the uh, off-ramp out there in California when my dad died in June of 81. Uh, I was not able to attend the funeral. Um, You know, uh, we lost my brother in 93. The family had to gather together to to go get him home. Uh, They nearly lost me in June of 97. Uh, That collision put me in rehab until March of 98. Wow. Uh, Wow. It was a struggle to get back into the truck after that for a while, but I've been pretty much an owner operator ever since in, uh, in 2010 I was driving down interstate 70 outside St. Louis and my appendix decided it no longer wanted to be with me. Mm. So I drove into the hospital emergency room and my company was kind enough to impound my truck for me while I was in recovery. Oh my Um, goodness. Yeah. So that's why I said earlier, you know, all these programs, they came from life experiences. I've been there. Um, you know, in, in 2012, I rescued a young lady that had rolled her tanker truck down a steep ravine in a rural area of Oklahoma. And um, after getting her on life flight uh, helicopter and speaking with her, you know, and all that, climbing up out of that ravine, you know, the Lord spoke to me. So, Robert, there's something else we'd like you to do. And uh, nearly eight years 371 families home reunited 64 this year uh here we are and nobody within this organization has ever taken any wage salary bonus attaboy nothing out of this organization this this is a hundred percent charity organization no one here gets any wages or anything like that and I'm doing this interview from the sleeper of my little white truck. So um, I'm out here on the road with y'all. We're a family. This is, this organization is about the family and and we're committed to it. You know, our little banner says uh, respect and dignity for North American truck drivers and their family in times of crisis. Mm -hmm. And that's not, that's not a catch line. That's not a marketing phrase. That is a true to heart, um, reasoning behind what we do and america owes drivers a debt of gratitude because you're our frontline workers no doubt about that you keep america rolling and without those wheels rolling things don't go where they're supposed to and that's right america can't roll that's right and and the trucking community is so incredibly generous it's it's just amazing the big hearts everybody has and and i want everybody in america to know that that's something that is is so powerful yeah we're family yes you know every every driver of every truck out here is my brother and sister and i've always had that claim to fame i mean i'm I'm an old school driver back in the day you know um when they had the donation jar at the end of the counter for a driver that needed to get home or yeah. Or, or, you know, maybe for one of the waitresses in a restaurant or something like that. Because we all, we all had to sit down restaurants, sure. um, you know, where we could do that. 
and, right. and we were involved in that. And basically what Truckers Final Mile is, is a, a modern day extension of that donation jar. You know, we just put this together. This, this isn't my charity. This is your charity. This, this belongs to the industry. And hopefully, you know, it, God lets me stay around long enough to, to complete the mission that I'm on to get this thing built so that when I am gone and I, I go sit in the chair up next to the Lord, um, that this will still be here for the industry to benefit from. And I think that there are a lot of people that will carry the torch because what you're doing is absolutely marvelous. You're Thank listening you. to the Truckers Network. We have to go to another break here, Robert, and we'll definitely get into some more details here. This is a phenomenal story of how you started this and what your organization does. We're talking with Robert Palm. He's the founder of Truckers Final Mile. You're listening to the Truckers Network radio show here on TNC Radio Live. Stay tuned for more coming up. This blog is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Truckers Against Trafficking can help fight modern-day slavery. Human trafficking is a real and frightening issue in the United States. It's a crime that forcefully exploits women, men, and children. Human trafficking involves transporting a person into a situation of exploitation, which can include forced labor, marriage, or prostitution. The term exploitation in this sense is commonly referred to as modern slavery. At this time, it's estimated that there are 20 to 40 million human trafficking victims internationally. According to the ACLU, the United States Department of State estimates that 14 to 17,000 people are trafficked into the United States each year. Truckers Against Trafficking exists to educate, equip, empower and mobilize members of the trucking, bus, and energy industries to combat human trafficking. Truckers Against Trafficking Goals Saturate trucking and related industries with TAT materials. Partner with law enforcement and government agencies to facilitate the investigation of human trafficking. Marshal the resources of partners to combat this crime. The Truckers Network proudly sponsors Truckers Against Trafficking and their efforts to fight against this heinous crime that's affecting hundreds of thousands of Americans each year. How Truckers Can Help Training Video Watch Truckers Against Trafficking's free training video and take the short quiz through their online portal. This will register you as an official TAT trained, TAT certified driver. Know the red flags. Download the Truckers Against Trafficking app and request a wallet card and window decal at tat.truckers at gmail.com. Share. Share Truckers Against Trafficking's training with others in person and through social media. How trucking companies, schools can help? Training video. Share Truckers Against Trafficking's free training video with your drivers. Request a digital file of your video or physical DVD from tat.truckers at gmail.com. Know the red flags. Tell your drivers to download the Truckers Against Trafficking app and or request wallet cards for your drivers from tat.truckers at gmail.com. Register. Register your company as trained to reflect your impact in the fight against trafficking and encourage others to do the same. This info blog was brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Ready for the power of positive and something that will put you back to a time you wanted to last forever? Music is the ultimate time machine. What was your favorite time? Do you want to go back there? LTD Radio features the songs of the 70s, 80s, and 90s that will transport you to a happier time. It'll make you smile and brighten your day. We could all use that about now. TNC Radio.Live is proud to carry the great music of LTD Radio. Welcome back to the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNC Radio Live. I'm Shelley Johnson with Tom Kelly, and we're talking with Robert Palm, who's the founder of Truckers Final Mile, about a fundraiser that they have called 5K in Five Days, which needs donations. The deadline's tomorrow, so we want to get the word out. Sean Kitchen is riding his motorcycle for this one, and Tom, you said you had a question. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I was sitting here trying to do the math in my head. Uh, so he, he, you had dinner with him in San Diego last night. Is that what you said? Uh, Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah, Tuesday uh, night. Yeah, Tuesday night, and this is Thursday, and he's already crossing the border into Louisiana about now. Yes. I, I, I'm amazed. How's he doing this? This is amazing. This, this, yeah, this really nice. guy, this guy has got some stamina. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, you know, with Transflow sponsoring him and Geotab sponsoring him, you know, they're covering the, the cost of any fuel and hotels that he stays and um, his meals and all that stuff. So he's fully covered in, in on the journey. He left Jacksonville, Florida, about 0300 uh, Eastern time Monday morning. And by 9 p.m. Pacific time uh, Tuesday, him and I were shaking hands. I, I felt, you know, as the CEO of an organization that that's being um, having this type of fundraiser for our our programs, that it was my duty to be there to meet him at at, at the halfway point, his turnaround point. And um, so we were able to meet, sit down, and and have a, a discussion. Then he says, you know, I got to go get some rest. Headed off to a hotel, and then he left. Uh, early Wednesday morning, uh, I believe he made it to Fort Stockton, Texas last night. He left Fort Stockton this morning, and like you said, he's he's about to cross into Louisiana right now. That's and his crazy. goal is, is to be home in well, to be at the uh, destination point in Jacksonville, Florida, um, Friday before the five o'clock news. You know, we were able to. With, with the help of the American Truck Syndicate, we were able to get a volunteer in Jacksonville, and we overnighted a banner to them uh, so that when he departed, we also had a presence, and we're planning on having a presence uh, when he arrives as well. That's fantastic. You said that he does this a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed at his endurance. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he's... He's done some great uh, fundraising um, for other organizations in the past as, as a endurance rider. Um, he's looking at doing several others in the future. Um, I don't know how far in the future. We didn't we didn't discuss what might go on later on. Um, but you know, with G, uh, GeoTab and Transflow on board as, as a sponsor for him, you know that's a great great thing. We've wanted to. Uh, show them that we're fully involved and fully supportive of his fundraiser and, and their generosity. And, and we appreciate everything that, that Sean's doing for Truckers Final Mile. We appreciate everybody that is donating over at www.truckersfinalmile.org to help Sean. You know, we'd like to exceed the $5,000 goal. Mm -hmm. um, we've had some donations come in during this radio program and, um, you know, we're right over $1,000 right now. So um, we got a long way to go, and he's got a very short way to go. Uh, and, and we hope to be able to, you know, maybe there's a CEO listening or, or um, a, a company that would like to sponsor our organization uh, that would consider, you know, vetting us, checking us out, um, and... If they find us a worthy organization, we definitely invite their sponsorship during Sean's uh, fundraiser. And, and that would all go towards meeting that $5,000 goal. Your organization yeah. does such marvelous things for drivers and their families and help. And, of course, it can't run without money. Absolutely. And it's been tougher since COVID and all the shutdowns for nonprofits to fundraise. I don't know if everyone and, and it's that. Not, yeah, it's not just Truckers Fund a Mile. It's other charities within the industry that need assistance. Um, it's charities outside the industry that need assistance. I mean, we're all, you know, working to uh, provide program assistance for, you know, the drivers, the families, and, and everything else within the industry. Um and it's always been our hope that the industry will help us take care of ourselves. Uh, you know, we are our brother's keeper and, you know, that no driver left behind and, and, and all those, those things that you talk about, um, you know, let's, let's do it. Let's show it. Let's get the $5,000 tonight and show Sean that his efforts, you know, are, were phenomenally worthy. And, um, and, you know, that, and we aid our organization. We do have a driver right now that passed away in Tulsa, Oklahoma. 
and his home is in uh, El Paso, Texas, and we're working to get that driver home. Uh, we recently got a driver home. Well, actually, this other driver will be home tomorrow. You know, he passed away in California, and his home is in Virginia. Um, and, and so we still need funds on him, and we need funds uh, on this gentleman, Peter, to get home to uh, El Paso. And, and those information is, is uh, published on our Facebook, truckersfindamile.org website, uh, 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 Facebook page, mm-hmm. and our website, www.truckersfinalmile.org. You have so many demands, and what you're doing is is so important. And the, the thing is, the networking that you were able to do prior to the COVID shutdowns and everything else, you don't have the ability. And that's why we want to help you get the word out that this is something that needs to be done. And please donate 5K in five days. I mean, if Sean can do that on a motorcycle, $5 is, is really nothing. <laughs> yeah, $5 is, you know, is, know. You know or, or, or you know what, you know, he's trying to raise $5,000. He's traveling 5,000 miles. So that's about a dollar a mile he wants to raise. If everyone that's behind the wheel right now would donate one cent of what they run this week, um, that would take care of it, you know, in itself. Um, or if a sponsor wanted to come in and, and say, you know, Truckers Fund a Mile is a vital resource for the families of this industry, they could become a sponsor during this fundraising campaign and, and, and make a huge difference for the families of this industry. Well, that's why we want everybody to know about it. We have about 15 seconds here, Robert. Uh, we're talking wow. with Robert Palm, uh, the founder of the Trucker's Final Mile. Where do people reach out again? www.truckersfinalmile.org. Upper right corner is a Donate Now button. Mm-hmm. Once you enter your information, um, you will see a little note space. You know, Leave a message. Just put in 5K and 5. Mm-hmm. And that will be attributed to Sean's fundraiser, uh, sponsored by Transflow and Geotab. Excellent. Thank you so much, Robert, for being on the show. Thank you, guys. appreciate you having me. Yes, thank you. You've been listening to the Truckers Network Radio Show here on TNC Radio. Live. Stay tuned for the Evening Surge coming up. Thank you for listening to another great interview on TNC Radio. Live and the Truckers Network Radio Show. All of the material you hear on TNC Radio. Live on our website, our broadcasts, or our podcasts are copyrighted. There can be no distribution without the express consent of TNC Radio. Live and its partners. For inquiries, write us at info at TNC Radio. Live. Radio. Live. Radio. Live. Radio. Live. Radio. Live. Radio. Live.